Hey y'all, cooking, cutting up, keeping it real. We are at Crystal King Pottery. And I'm gonna turn this around so y'all can see. We're walking up the little walkway. It's beautiful. Vicky, now say hey, Vicky. <laughs> We're going into the pottery to meet Crystal King. Janet, do you wanna film? Sure. Whoops, sorry about my fingers, everybody. Look, this, just the entranceways to these places are gorgeous. And I'm guessing that, yes, it is a workshop back there with the door open. I can see the unfired clay pieces in there. And just the landscape, the decor outside, it's country, it's beautiful, it's south. And Look at those tree and vine branches wrapped around. Oh my goodness. We're in heaven. You know that, right? Oh, here she is. Hello. Come on in. Come on in to So I have kind of a treat today that you guys didn't know about. I have started working on pumpkins as well. Oh, can you hear that? Pumpkins. I would love that. I have the pumpkin started, so I've, I've been working on these right here. Oh, here. I'm going to come over so the ki so the mic can pick up pick up your voice, okay? okay. okay. Yeah, so we're prime season coming up in October is we have the um, a can, pumpkin patch and trail. Can you turn with, the music off, please? Yes, we're we're going to step up. She's she's going to turn like the music the off so that we're safe. There we go. Clearly, that's right. They are beautiful. So, yeah, so are. these guys are the first of the season. We have something really special here in Seagrove with about five different potters. It's the, you know, our Pottery Pumpkin Patch Trail. And what that is, is Saturdays in October, there are five or six of us that open up our shops with this real big shindig with all the pottery pumpkins and pumpkin related and fall related items nice. that we make. So for me, I've been doing pumpkins, um, goodness, for about 10 years now. Um, I started out, my parents were potters from here, yeah. so my multi-generational uh, family, but as a little girl, I did more sculpting with my hands than throwing on the wheel. So, actually, my whole specialty is hand-built sculpture work, and pumpkins are just a small part of that. I have a couple of sculptures, like actual figurative oh, sculptures and the animal pieces that are over yes. Yeah, I do a lot of this. I've just spotted what I have to buy. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, when is that? A okay, face joke? Uh, I'm gonna come over to catch oh, your voice. Oh, oh, this is cute. Oh, Jenny's smiling. Oh, yeah, I, love side, yeah. I love that. Yes. I like whimsical. My kitchen's very oh, whimsical. Oh, that is beautiful. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so this is what we're making. It takes about a month ahead to make everything. So starting September 1st, I start creating pumpkins of all sizes. But since you guys were coming today and I actually had a wedding gift for a friend, I'm making my first ones. And They're so, beautiful. I'm not getting married again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really sweet. One of I'm my childhood. Married. I'm still married. We might just, maybe we'll just ring Get married again just to get a Crystal King a pumpkin. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. So that's just a little taste. This is what they look like. Come on, follow me over here. This is what they look like finished. And what's kind of fun about the pumpkin trail with the five different potters is that we each have our own unique style. So I'm every one of us sorry. has a very different version of what mm -hmm. we do. One of them does gourds. Um, mm -hmm. Mine are kind of known for the bright colors. Mm -hmm. So this is one of my largest. This is one of my small. Mm -hmm. And then over here, like that every year I do a different know, color release. Oh, really? That makes it fun. So what's this year? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> you caught me kind of early like I am thinking about it. And I wanted to um, maybe pick up this mug to show something really fun. So we don't just do pumpkins, but there's also other Oh, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. that's so beautiful. So I happened to save one from last season. That's in my beautiful. house for promotional photos and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I know that you do your devotional morning. I do. I do. So I'm going to present you with this. Oh, oh yeah. 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 And I know it's, it's so you can use it through the whole thing. It'll be represented yeah. on my Mount morning devotions. Oh, yeah. my God. Mm -hmm. I love it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I love, we'll, I love the colors. We'll wrap it up before you leave. Okay. okay. That way you can okay. I love it. So, this There's is something the about a mug, too. Like, yeah. it has to feel good in your hand. Yeah. Yeah. 
it has to be comfortable in your hand, and I don't like a little one that my coffee will slosh out. Right, nice, nice party. Yep, 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 yep. So my parents made traditional functional pottery for 40 years. Right. Mugs were just a staple. Uh, many of the pottery shops make different versions of mugs. So once they retired, they retired last year. I started taking over the mug. Nice. Making. But with mine, a lot of them, we do the basic coffee mm -hmm. mug, but mine have... This is I so do cute. Face mugs, I do the pumpkin mugs, and we do snowman mugs. In the I have oh. the face mug, and I have the little bitty face. Yeah. That I put, and I put um, toothpicks on my uh, table with them. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so the, the little. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. This is one of the. So we're talking face jugs today. This is kind of a face jug area. Coming in to get the volume for us. Yeah. So this is one of the face mugs. This is another version of it. Oh, that's cute. So for someone coming in for the first time, they may want to. And he's got an ear. Jug. He's got an ear on he's one side. I don't put it on that side because of the handle. Um, but these are some of the face jugs that I make. I like your too. Now, we did have a viewer uh, who asked, when you create these, could you create them in the likeness of someone or maybe when people come take lessons from you or something? That is, that's an interesting question. And my answer to that is, honestly, when you're looking at some of these others, these are all made by... Um, very historical and well-known potters that go back almost eight generations, some of them, besides my own here. Mm -hmm. And what you find with each maker is they tend to have their own style of putting on the face and the features. It's not something that we intentionally do. It's something that we naturally do. Mm -hmm. So in my family, if I had one standing beside my mother's and my father's, you would see some similarities in the clay and the glazes because we use the same materials. And there might be something in it that mimics one another, but there's a difference between the ones. My mom's were more comical, which really is her personality. Mm -hmm. My dad's had a little bit more uh, formed um, features. And then mine are typically, mine are not mean looking, mine are comical happy. and happy. Mm -hmm. And so you find amongst the makers, you can identify each maker by looking, by at, the looking at it. And I think that's why they're so collectible for the historical ones, because you can see you know, that's a mm -hmm. specific person. That's the mm -hmm. potter from Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's the one from North Carolina. And you yeah. know their work mm -hmm. by this style. Mm -hmm. So there are some artists who can do maybe likenesses and caricatures, but the average folk art face jug maker just mm -hmm. use their typical style. It you, wasn't necessarily You do like teach lessons, person. don't you? I think I I've do, seen... We do day classes. So yes. that you have the opportunity in an hour or two to make your own face mugs or, or pumpkins or facial features mm -hmm. on the piece. So mm -hmm. I go step by step and mm -hmm. show you, this is how you form a nose. This is how you apply right. it on. This is how you do your eyes. Right. And what's amazing is to see a class full of 15 people have, all of them are able to make something that they're proud of, but each one of them has a very unique and very different mm -hmm. style about it. So it's not that they can actually look at a person and capture it. That would be for um, maybe, it's kind of like fine art. You have folk art, you have abstract paintings, and then you have someone who can do realism. Mm -hmm. There are people who can do realism face jugs and maybe can make one look like a person, but the average folk artist is a more loose or abstract look. That's a very so that's good description. I taught sculpting in school for a couple of decades, so yes. yes, I can relate, I can relate. I can relate. We've done faces, so. I know that Not, my style is much more loose yes. and free, and, and that's what I enjoy about that's it. That's wonderful. Yes. So of this display, are there any that are your parents here? I do, I have it. Over Later on, okay. I'd love to show you. So I keep above the windows pretty much a museum collection of historical jugs. And I teach people. So as they come in here, we're able to point and share the stories of these traditional makers from North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia so in the display areas above the windows, yes. she's saying. And then high up here, up here in the middle of the room. Coming. The second and third one there, that's my dad. The two tall ones. Second and third tall yeah, ones. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like that and he has. One. Yeah, it looks like that. And he has. So one of the traditions for my family from the lady who taught them was to use broken china plates as teeth. Okay. So they would take the oh. old china plates. So bone china is already fired hot enough that it won't melt in the kiln when we fire it. So we can break the plate and actually put it up into the clay. And then that is one of the ways we do teeth. Another is just a sculpt out of white clay. Very well, Lisa, you were all about the teeth when mm -hmm. you were first looking at this pottery, mm -hmm. weren't you? Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Those are kind of fun. This is, um, I actually had just made some of these um, over the last couple of days. Oh, 
I like the eyeball. Thank you. So this style of eyeball, I actually took from my mother's mm -hmm. style. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to show you the difference. So typically mine are kind of set on either side. of the We're speaking picture. about the eyeballs yes. here. And if you look at this one's eyes, how they are together, it makes a more comical look, a little fun face. But that is how my mother made most of hers. So oh. that's kind of in honor of like the way that. my mom made mm -hmm. it. Get a lot of and is this studio space uh, originally your parents or yours or? We built this for for us to have a second store right okay. out of coming out of high school as I chose this as a career. I was already working in pottery. We needed a second location that would be right along wow. Pottery Highway because okay. theirs was off, off a few miles into the country. And it just worked out, the timing. So we built this 25 years to this year. Nice. Isn't that something? Look at the ears. We give them names sometimes. Oh, you have yes, names. names. Yep, this is Polly. He looks like a Polly. Polly. So I do, after I'm done, I look at it, see if I can figure out the, the vibe I'm getting. That one didn't have it yet. We can name him. I think oh. he looks like a uh, Harry. Harry. Meet Harry. And look at Harry's mustache. Harry. Yes. Harry's going to get his name. I need to put it on there. Maybe you can write it on there. You want okay. to Yeah. Come on over here. I just use a, a sharp. Yeah, we can use pen and just put it there. We can even put. Why don't we put your whole show name on there? Okay. That'd be fun. Ah, yeah, yeah. Like Harry that. from Cook and Cutting Up and yeah. Keeping It Real. You gotta come around so I can see Lisa. So this is Crystal King Pottery in Seagrove that we're visiting right now. And Lisa is getting Harry's name and cooking, cutting up, keeping it real on here. Wow. There we go. That's Mr. Awesome. Harry. Harry, you rock. I love it. Harry with the eyebrows and and, and the teeth. mustache, and the eyes, and the teeth. There he is. Wow, that's cool. All right, everybody. Well, we're going to continue our visit at Crystal King Pottery. Anything else you wanted to wrap up with? How do they reach you, Crystal, um, if so they're interested? I have um, a website. It's crystalkingpottery.studio, and I have Facebook and Instagram, which is just under Crystal King Pottery. So I'm pretty accessible. I often show making uh, the pieces, too, on our uh, social media. So okay. as I sit here working, I show the process, and let's see here. Oh, and my, what's your clay? Can you explain the clay itself? I can. So in this piece, we have a couple different clays that we use. If you notice that the eyes are whiter, and actually the teeth in these would be made out of a white clay. Okay. So back in the old days, uh, the old timers would have had to go out with a wheelbarrow and maybe some horses out in the woods and definitely a shovel and dig it by the creek bed, bring it back. <laughs> dig and it by the creek. Okay. We don't really have to do that anymore. Um, I do have equipment where I reclaim clay, but we have a nice company here in Seagrove that digs local clays. And there's about eight different clay bodies, I think, that they offer us for different types of use for pottery. There may be um, one clay that's good for wood firing, and one that's good for sculpture, and one that's good for raccoon, uh, different types of fire. So there's a real science to that, and then having different clays gives us different variety of work. I'm just going to attach a lip here. So you get your base shape, and then you attach the different uh, features that protrude outward. Yes, yes. Okay. So these jugs would have been turned a few days ago. We need them to be leather hard, which means I can press on it, mm -hmm. but as I'm making the features, it doesn't collapse. Okay. If it's too hard, then the features won't be able to be molded on it. So you really got to catch it in this leather hard stage in order wow. to have the features. Wow, the timing involved. Timing is a big part of it. it really what about is. humidity in the air? Um, you really have to take the seasons into account in the winter. Um, in the winter time, then the, the pots might last longer sitting out. In the summer, they could dry overnight. If I leave them uncovered and they get too hard, I've messed up. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you do have to consider the humidity. And see how this eye, she's got the bottom lid on it. Yeah, I don't have Whereas one this one, the, the bottom that. lid's not on there yet. Let's see here. We can take care of that. 
Oh yes, and all the fun sculpting tools. How's your skin under all this clay? Is Actually, it? my father always said the potter's wheel was like an exfoliant to his skin. Right. Instead of having calluses turning on the potter's wheel, left away all of the all of the calluses. So it's actually, you think of a mud mask for your face. It's, yeah. It's actually good for your skin. The thing that's harsh is having your hands in and out of water. Right. So look at that. Now the eyeball is set it's down in with the two eyelids. Let's form his mouth, because that's where okay. the real personality comes out. Personality usually. coming up. So I'm just molding, but, shaping. You know, you can see the side profile protrusion of everything that gives it so much character. All right, so, so what I'll do is kind of hold that there to see if I like the personality it's showing me. There's all kinds of things you do, you change it. If you choose. Change see? the expression. But yeah. for me, and I want to leave some room for teeth. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the dental just hygienist over there is yes, is all Lisa. about yeah. Oh, and you're roughening up yes. the uh, we call the scoring the, scoring the clay so that it has some rough texture so it will adhere into one another better. And I'm just gonna work it in. Work it, girl. Work, <laughs> it. work it. And I like wow. the full lips. They pay a lot of money to get their lips. That's like right. That. Oh, it's Botox. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the Botox oh, lips. Oh, I love that mug. Oh, wow. You see mostly male uh, face jugs rather than feminine because feminine features are really difficult to sculpt. It's so about 90% of them you'll see as a uh, male personality, and that's why. All right, so that's on there. Let's take some white clay here. This is my white clay. It doesn't look too different in this form that once we fire it, you can see a drastic difference. In and it. how are you distinguishing just the I thing? said it, I said it over here. So oh, <laughs> really? It's not about the, um, I do have different, softer hardness you of can it. Show them, you can show yeah. them the clay bags here yeah. and that shows there's a dark, there's a buff and then there's a white this and I do have to write on it. She has to write on the bag to know the difference between the dark, the buff and the white. And it's all about, in the end, you, knowing the difference and having it marked, and then when it's fired, after that, you'll see the whiteness. So I'm going to check his teeth here. Mm, teeth check. Okay, I'm going to pull it back out. Some teeth for you. I'm a hygienist. Yes, you want to come make some teeth? Yes. All right, I think we will let, we'll, we'll let Lisa here Give get the white. Central incisors. Yes. Central incisors. Right. She's going to get all technical on us. I'm going to show you so we can. He's got big lips, so I think he needs big teeth. So you can just big it. lips, big teeth. We want to square him off like he's had the braces. Oh, oh! Look, she's even got the shape at the back. Right, of here's them. the root. <laughs> <laughs> and here is the central incisor. Let's we'll square him off a little bit more. There you go. <laughs> okay, there's the center. All right. Now that root, so we really won't get. I'm gonna have to tear I'm it off. Take yeah, it off. It's, yeah. oh. this is hidden. You're gonna do an apicoectomy. Yeah. Just go. take it on off. Apicoectomy. Okay. Look at this. Is gonna be a really big one. There we go. He only needs two front teeth like that. Yes, He's do, another, do another, do another, do another. There we go. I love it. <laughs> All right, we need a little bigger. Oh, the first one, the, you're gonna have it bigger? I mm, know, oh, I'm, I'm sat and talking to myself. I'm trying to make the match up a bit. Let me look here. Yeah. There we go. All right, and look, I'm gonna put his eyes in real quick. So I just there's the tooth right here waiting. All right. Oh, the pupils or the irises. What so we have to score them. Those will be the pupils. So those will be the pupils. We have to score it, or it'll just fall out. Oh, All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna push he it just up needs in there. Two. Yes. His I lips agree. are so big. I wouldn't put no more I teeth agree. on. There we are. Love it. And then we're gonna. His name's Freddie. Freddie, let's Freddy. let's write it on the back. There's Freddie. Let's What's see. What's up, Freddie? I'm gonna give him the pupils where he really is looking at. We need him eyebrows too here in a minute. Okay. This is so fascinating. It's fun. No kidding. I enjoy it. You must love your day every day. I really do have fun. Yeah. <laughs> you really have beautiful have teeth too, Crystal. Well, thank you. Wow. Look at that. Coming from oh, he's cute. I like him. Thing. So after you have him Can I change his name to Bubba? Yes. Oh, he's more of a Bubba. He's coming too hard, they really do. After you have all his facial features added, 
and you're satisfied, then the next step would be? So we will fully dry. We'll leave these out for maybe a week. Air dry. Air dry. Air dry for a week. And they will be sanded to knock off all the little, the burrs and things on them. Load them in the kiln for about, about an eight hour bis firing. Take them out. They'll be glazed, which means usually with these dipping them into a big vat of glaze. Then loading them in the kiln again and firing for another full day, another eight hours, cooling another day, and then unloaded for gotcha. they're finished. So the second firing is for the glazing okay. and uh, finishing, turning the glaze into like a glass is basically what you're doing. So the old timers, why were face jugs made? They were originally made from as early as maybe the mid 1800s. And if you think about the early settlers back then, they were doing tons of storage vessels. It's what all of the liquids were stored in these big vessels that the early settlers were making. Turning a jug into art, many saw as a waste of time. But for the potters at the end of a long day, it was a creative expression. So in these eight generations of families handing it down the craft, there were a few of these face jugs being made in these folk art families. And so mm -hmm. in the early, maybe early 80s, 1980s, historians really started understanding that this was a significant Southern folk art. And there started to be research and books and TV specials and the, the public became educated on what it meant and started collecting them. And that kind of paved the way for the artists of the time to start making them again, making a living at it. So my parents started in the early 80s. Those are some bucky teeth now. He's a cute. I tell you, he, bucky. Listen, he's had periodontal disease. <laughs> I can tell you about him. He's had periodontal disease and he's lost all of his bone teeth, but he still can eat corn on the cob with those two. Oh, he could. He could. Mm -hmm. I think he needs a mustache. Yeah. There's something there. Yes, he needs a mustache. He's a little too he's clean shaven. Okay. He's, we'll put a mustache and he'll be good. Bubba. That's Bubba. <laughs> Bubba. Talk about the little spinny wheel thing that's underneath. Oh, I just use that for ease. Oh, okay. I don't always have to have it. It's but just the plate a, that it's on or the whatever you call this, that. This is, this is called a, a bat. And what it's for is when you're throwing a piece on the potter's wheel or turning. If we're doing a plate or a bowl, you wouldn't be able to lift the piece up. So this you would lift up, move over, do another one. And in when this dries, it pops off and releases. Okay. So coffee mugs, small items, we're able to turn right on this and cut it off and then place onto like a board. Mm -hmm. But larger items and things like a plate or a bowl, you can't, t you can't remove it because it would warp it. So these bats are what we use to lift off the potter's wheel when we turn it. Easy for carrying, basically. So of your, um, when you think of a, <clears throat> when you think of a work day, um, how much time a day are your hands in clay? Clay? Um, not all day for me because I do all the processing myself, which means on a day like today, I would plan on making a couple of these sculptural pieces. And then I am going to go down to my work studio and make, um, do a glaze load. So I would lay out all the pots that I'm going to glaze and that's going to take a few hours. And then I'm going to load them into the kiln before I leave. So honestly, with a time that's allotted, I'll probably work till, you know, an extra hour tonight because I really want to get that glaze load loaded in, in the kiln. It's definitely not a nine to five job, it's is it? It's not. It's <laughs> not. It's a fun job, but it is not nine to five. Work a lot of extra hours just to be able to produce the pieces. And if there's a kiln firing, you have to sit with it. Oh, you do? Hours. So some, yeah, just to be safe at times. At times you have to monitor it and turn it up at different points. So, so this yeah. building is where the sales are. It's where you do some of the sculpting work at the beginning stages. And then I have a work studio. Which we'll go see lower. afterwards. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And that's where the kilns are and the glazes. Wow. So Dorothy Almond, who taught my mom mm -hmm. and dad, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, was an eighth generation mm -hmm. potter. She always worked in her showroom because mm -hmm. the Seagrove being a tourism spot, she wanted to be able to welcome the people that came into the door, her mm -hmm. customers. Mm -hmm. So she turned right in the same showroom where they were shopping right. so she could work. So I learned right in front of people. When I was learning to throw, I learned right into them. <laughs> so there was you always had an audience. I always had an audience. Yeah. Well, here this comes the mustache. Crystal. Thank you. Love Thank that. You. There we go. We're giving him the texturizing the hair. Watch him. Bubba. Oh my gosh, right. she He's looks still Bubba. phenomenal. I'll give him 
Did you name it Bella? Bella. Oh, there's the eyelashes there. Okay. Let me think. So we're going to write my name, Crystal King, right here. Seagrove, North Carolina, the date. And Bubba. then Bubba. Bubba. And we're going to put that it was made on the show. That's yeah, cute. I think it's fun to document it. Well, I just put the initials on this other one. Chris okay. I just put CCUCR. Okay. I may write it on it. You know, my mom for years would write current events on her on her jokes. That's a great idea. And at the time, you're thinking, eh. But when you go back and read some of the things that we've yeah, missed yeah. or happened, it's just really right. interesting. So I'm kind of picking up on doing that occasionally now. Well, thank you so, so much for welcome. having us. You're welcome. I love my mug. Yes. I it's look almost seeing pumpkin it. season. It is bright in time and that's the first one of the season mm -hmm. i just listed some on the website as a pre-order basis because i knew some of your um, enthusiasts might be interested and we're tagging you guys on okay. everything so yeah. they'll be able to get to your site easily okay i listed them because when we start our open houses it's hard to have things online yeah and i thought well we'll do this special for today yeah. and give it a chance i got gotcha. you repeat yeah. it again crystal where they can find you um it's crystal king pottery studio and then crystal king pottery on facebook and instagram Right. All right. Well, we'll pick up again on the next part of the tour here. But we're going to close out for right now. So for cooking, cutting up, keeping it real in Seagrove, North Carolina, Meet Crystal Bubba. King Pottery. <laughs> Meet Bubba. Bubba. Hey, look at this second part of the studio for Crystal King with these pumpkins ready to roll for the kiln and she was saying after the air dry, there's a couple of firings that happen and some cleaning up of any rough edges. But even though this is pottery territory, look at that. It's still so neat and tidy in here. I can just imagine how much fun her workday is with her hands in this clay, creating and thinking up what she's going to do next and how great that she has more than one space to do this, and I'm gonna walk over towards where the um, kiln is. The others have all headed to the car, so they're gonna to have to watch this video to know about this phase of operation. So look at the kilns here. It's warm in this room, and the windows are open, but there's some pieces in that one. And here's one right here that is empty. Wow. Amazing. Thanks everyone for coming along and having a view of how this is all created.